there is nothing wrong with your internet, do not attempt to adjust your settings. We are controlling the podcast. We control the squealing and the screams. We can make your heart flutter, your eyes blur from tears, or sharpen your mind to crystal clarity. For the next hour, sit back. We are in control of what you hear. We repeat, there is nothing wrong with your setting. You are about to experience the awe and mystery known as the female mind. You are now entering the Fangirl Zone. Hello everyone and welcome to Sci-Fi Talk on the Fangirl Zone, a podcast where we discuss shows on the Sci-Fi Channel. I'm Sean Fangirl S. And I'm Steve and tonight we'll be discussing episode one of season four of Winona Earp. Oh, it seems like it's been forever. Yes. So long. But before we jump into all the awesomeness that is Winona Earp, let's take a minute for some news. For those of you who haven't been paying attention, because it was all over Twitter and Facebook and everywhere the Earp cast was, Comic-Con, San Diego Comic-Con to be exact, did a Comic-Con at home and they had a Winona Earp panel. So I highly recommend you searching that out on YouTube or going to comic-con.org and the Comic-Con at home, and you can search for the Winona Earp panel that way as well. It was great. Steve is still watching part of it. I know it's going to be up for a couple weeks, they said at least. But the cast, they cracked me up, including Emily. They got them all at one point to say Winona Earp in their best Doc Holiday voice. And like, nobody can get it quite right. And Tim's (laughs) like, I'm not doing anything special. But then he does it, and they're all like, yeah, that's it. It was great. And his mustache, and it was so funny because they were showing, like, clips from each season, and you just see how his mustache gets poofier and poofier. (laughs) It has a life of its own. Yes, it does. (laughs) And for those of you that have attended, Steve and Fred being two of those people from the Fangirl Zone, Herba Palooza is officially canceled this year. It was pushed for a while, but they are, looks like they're officially canceling everything. And it is being moved for sure, well, as sure as we can be in these times. Right. To Columbus, Ohio, October 29th through 31st, 2021. So, not bad. But for me, if you know me, Halloween is a huge deal. I won't be able to make that (laughs) because I go all out for Halloween to try to scare the bejesus out of everybody. Yes, she does. (laughs) We'll share some of those pictures in October. So let's jump into the most awesome show that we have been waiting for with bated breath and get some ratings news first. All right. Episode one brought in a 0.13 in adults 18 to 49 with 0.459 million viewers, making it the 42nd rated cable show for the day. And it was actually up a tick over season three's premiere. I know there were so many people on Twitter, and personally, I had a really hard time even trying to tweet the show. Yes. And it was funny because the cast pretty much said the same thing, and they know what was happening. Right. So. Yeah, it uh, was insane on Twitter, that's for sure. Yes, it was great. So many questions everybody had about, (laughs) well, everything. Yeah. And we got a new cast member. Yes, we have Martina Ortiz Luis. As Rachel Valdez, not the Valdez that Jeremy cut into the staircase, though. Yeah, that was great, (laughs) especially the explanation for that. But yeah, (laughs) we'll get there. We'll get there. So let's jump in. Episode one, On the Road Again. Winona Earp races to find a way into the garden before her sister is trapped forever. So let's start with Winona, because that's a good place to start. We got Winona, Nedley, and wait, Mercedes? Yeah. <laughs> Never thought we were going to see her. Uh, breaking the curse must have uh, freed her from uh, the witch's curse, I guess. I guess. But I love it because we're at Shorty's and you see Winona gathering weapons. And of course, you have to have your flask. Yeah. You have to stop for that. And this was the preview, like this little, little snippet that they showed for the San Diego panel. Yes. And when. They go to Nedley. He's like, can you pick up the pace? I feel like I've been standing here for two years. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. 
I died. Like, I could just hear the Erpers, like, cheering if we were in the hall. You oh, know, absolutely. In it would have just busted out. <laughs> yes. And unfortunately, he was not on the Zoom call with them that they did for the virtual panel, but we had basically the rest of the crews. We didn't have our new person either, but I think that was on purpose. I <laughs> don't want to give too much away till we actually see them on screen. Right. You know? Winona and Nedley trudge through the snowy woods to try to find the invisible staircase that, hey, wait a second, the staircase is there. Right. What's up with that? It's there. It's not there. It keeps popping up. And I love it because Winona starts going up and talking to Nedley. She's like, I'm going to get them. And he's like, I have faith in you. You got this. And I didn't catch it. And I've watched this section twice. One small step for MILF, <laughs> one giant leap for MILF kind. No, that part, that part I had. <laughs> but when she's like, Nedley, he's like, still not looking at your ass. I'm like, wait, oh, yeah, wh- yeah. <laughs> wait, wh- where did that come from? I'm like, that had to be from last season. And I just totally missed like where it was because I wasn't expecting it. Hey, yeah, no, I think that probably goes back to about season one. Oh, geez. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I'm like, because I kept watching. I'm like, I don't hear her saying anything about her ass before he says that. No. <laughs> That's why I was like, what? Yeah, hilarious. Because, of course, she's like, we're going to get them. We're going to get our baby girl back. And Nedley's like, yep, yep, because you got this. <laughs> and she takes that step, which I'm surprised she got as far up the staircase as she did because it had stopped her previously you're right so i think at that point she should have been like wait a second yeah something's going on here let's be a little bit more careful (laughs) and then she just falls off the stairs because well there's nothing on the other side of that arch right now for her nope yeah she wasn't happy and nedley had a couple (laughs) f-bombs yeah but upon returning to her feet she and Nedley are suddenly surrounded by supernatural crab. <laughs> what? Uh, Nedley's like, are you sure nothing came out of that door from yeah from the other side? And she's like, what are you talking about? Well, something came from the garden or elsewhere. And apparently those little things are bitey or pincery. I don't know how you want to say it because it got Nedley. But I loved how Winona's like, don't worry, I was trained by Doc Holliday with the gun. And then the next thing you know, we see Nedley bleeding. And I'm like, did she shoot him? (laughs) No, she didn't shoot him. (laughs) I really was like, hold on a second. Right. (laughs) So next thing you know, we have Winona and Nedley back at the homestead where he asks for a first aid kit. Oh, Oh, God, you were talking to the wrong sister. Yep. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, she's like, uh, yeah. And as I'm watching this, my husband has not watched most of this with me because right. of the time. But he's watching this one and she's like, uh, back teen? He goes, wait, did she just say back teen? Do they even make that anymore? <laughs> I'm like, thanks for the input there, hon. Yeah. Just throwing that out. But he decides to go up to the bathroom to try to find a way to patch himself up since I know he's doing a really bad job trying to find anything. It's like maybe even a towel. I don't know. But as he's going to go upstairs, they see Valdez carved on, what is that called? Well, the under staircase. Like, I don't right, know what yeah. they called officially. The I wall of the hall. staircase. <laughs> so who is this? Who could it be? And then what do we get? We get to find out why that was put there. And we kind of get this shift where we see Jeremy who was in the homestead coming out of being knocked out. Yeah, yeah, he was the first one that regained consciousness. Okay, see, I I should have watched again the last couple episodes so I can remember everything. Yeah, Winona drugged them all. So I remember she drugged them. I just couldn't remember if he was there at the time. Yeah, him, Robin, and Nicole. Okay, and yeah, he's trying to find a pen, and I love it. Why don't you have a pen anywhere? I I get that. Sometimes it's hard to find one, but we do find out later that, oh, well, of course he, it wasn't written in pen. There's knives in the pen drawer. Right. (laughs) I'm a demon hunter. (laughs) (laughs) But we also get to see what I assume is supposed to be Black Badge come in and Jeremy kind of sort of tried to keep them out. 
Right. Because they're evacuating for your own good. If you don't leave, we will forcibly take you. It's like, yeah, that that sounds like something normal people would say if you're helping. I mean, maybe not. No. No. (laughs) But when Jeremy's like, no, sorry, gays only. (laughs) Like, he doesn't know what to say. And then when they come in with him saying, I hope that's set on tickle. Hey, Jeremy, only you. Yeah. He was tased. And we haven't seen him because we did not get Jeremy or Robin this episode. I kind of forgot about Robin, to be right. honest. <laughs> like, I forgot he was in that that kitchen. It's like I seen somebody, but I couldn't remember who else was there. Right. He just, I don't know. I want him to be better this season <laughs> if we get him. I'm kind of afraid he's going to be disappeared. That's very possible, but knowing Jeremy, he will find a way to make his escape. Oh, let's hope so. Just like somebody else did. Yes, because suddenly we're back to the present, and Winona gets her little spidey sense of singling. She goes around the corner and pulls back, and there's a knife that just bing right into the wall. I was like, damn, who's there? And here's our unexpected guest for the day. It's Mercedes. Looking all like herself all of a sudden. Yeah. Face is all intact. Everything's good. What? I'm like, hold on a second. I thought she died or was taken. Like, then I'm like, didn't she have her face ripped off? I didn't even know where we were with her. I was not expecting her to be back. No. At all. And her attitude. Like, just the way she was talking, you can tell that she was different. At least I felt that way. Yeah, she seemed a lot more like her old self to me. Yeah, like, kind of flaky and self-absorbed, I guess. Yes, (laughs) absolutely. (laughs) But little changes, because she says to my nona, yeah, I've never thrown a knife before. And look how good that was. Hold on a second. (laughs) Yeah. What else might be possessing you? Yeah. Because last we seen her, she was with Kate. And apparently she left Kate to fend for herself while, I don't know, everything was going to hell and moving in on her. But I love how her explanation was, oh, she must have like mind melded or something and (laughs) sent me running because I would have never done that myself. Nobody believes you, Mercedes. No. (laughs) And uh, Nedley's like, "Uh, we still have some stuff we got to do. I know that it's like, good thing you're talking and everything, but I'm still bleeding over here. But she did manage to find something to help him. Right. Because of all the things we get, he finds a feminine hygiene product. Right. Super absorbent. It'll help. (laughs) Well, if you think about it. Yeah. The items were originally made for bullet wounds so why not sure yeah but it turns out nedley had doll's files at his office still maybe they can help what what excuse me where were they and then when we go and we find out they were hidden in a file box in the couch yeah say what <laughs> i love he's like nobody ever uses this it's like if you only knew nedley yeah. <laughs> How did nobody notice how uncomfortable that was? That's right. Only story. <laughs> but Nudley ain't going to make it right now. I'm not saying he's dying. I hope not. Yeah. But then again, we don't know what those weird crab things have done. No. I hope it's not an alien situation. Hey, with Winona Earp, you never know. I don't want anything busted out of Nudley's gut. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we just got him back. But Mercedes said she'll stay with him. And... Make sure he's okay. Yeah, okay. We'll see how all that goes. So Winona is off to a town called Monument, which is supposed to be close, but we'll see, because that's the last place that this Valdez character is supposed to have been. I don't know if this is good or bad. (sighs) Let's head to a train. The only clue they've got. (laughs) Yes. Let's head to a train going where? That's a really good question. Apparently, it's going outside of the triangle, that's for sure. Yeah, this is interesting. Now, was this the train that they were trying to take Bobo to before? Because weren't they trying to get him? Yes, they were supposed to get him on a train, too. Yep. Black badge special. I guess. But Nicole wakes up on a train car, and she's like, oh, I'm just going to try the door, until who else is there and happens to save her? 
none other than Kate. Big nose Kate. Well, she's like, listen, don't touch that. See that guy laying there? He tried it. It's wired. Not a good thing. No. No touchy. Okay. So where are the guards? Obviously, they just threw them into this, like, I don't know, storage container. Right, basically. And seeing that they electrified the door, they didn't need guards. You would think that they'd be somewhere, or at least know who they're dealing with. Right. Well, Kate and Nicole basically share the information that they've had, what they can have, because Nicole was kind of knocked out for some of it. So, stairway, private militia, propped up dummy government, banish everybody from town. Black badge doing a little, uh, let's see, regime change. Sounds very shaky in regards to any kind of plan with them. Right. And, of course, Nicole's like, I need to get in touch with Waverly. And Kate, Kate, you can do that with your powers, right? Eh, That's kind of iffy, but let's do a tarot card reading and we'll see how that works out. Interesting the way it comes out because, of course... Nicole freaks out because the death card comes out. Right. But the death card doesn't mean death. I think most of us have learned that from random stuff that the tarot right. cards come up. <laughs> so, okay, it's still definitely different. But it turns out there's a journey coming. All right. And they need to get off that train, don't they? But Kate figures out, you know what? You can't touch it because, well, technically you're alive, and then you won't be if you touch the door. So she does it. Now, what I don't understand is, okay, she has, like, supernatural strength. She She's opening it, and Nicole jumps out. Why didn't Kate jump out and, like, let go of the door? That's a good question. I would have to say that because of the guy that was lying there, she probably knew that she would need replenishment asap and if she went with nicole she probably wouldn't get that so i think it was more for her survival as well plus she needs to know where they're taking them and you know we got a mole on the inside ah that makes more sense because like a guard suddenly comes in where's the other person okay dumbass she's laying on the ground you obviously think she's dead And you're talking to her. Right. And you see her eyes change and you go, oh, good. This guy ain't going to be around for long. Right. Maybe you should have paid attention to who was in the car. Right. Bye. Bye, random BBD that we don't know. Yep. And that's the thing is apparently once our um, Orphan Black alumni left Black Badge, we really didn't ever get to see who took over. That's true. And so they may know nothing about Winona, especially if Nedley was able to get all of um, Dolls' files and stash them away. So BBD may not have any clue who they're dealing with right now. Hmm. That's bad for them. Yes. <laughs> we'll laugh at them as the season goes, I'm sure. Yes. Now, let's go talk about a couple people who... I think everybody's been pretty excited to find out what happened. Yeah, and it ain't the Garden of Eden. (laughs) Uh, Somebody had a weird idea of what a Garden of Eden was. I don't think the Yelp reviews were quite on the same page as uh, what what they got. No. Because Doc emerges from the door, and it's like a wasteland. There's nothing growing. There's just some monoliths here and there. And And other doors. No, yeah. And the door closes. Well, crap. Yeah, (laughs) it won't open back either. (laughs) He starts to walk and he hears Waverly because she's yelling because all of a sudden she's like chained up. How long has she been there? Right. And if she's supposed to be the angel to keep it all under control, why are these chains around her growing tighter and look like they're trying to crush her? Yeah. Yeah. Because that freaked me out. I don't know about you. Oh, yeah. This was not the Garden of Eden that anybody was expecting, that's for sure. One star. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Doc does manage to loosen the chains because he sees something going down 
a hole. And he's like, uh, it would have to be a well. Yes. And he's like, pulls it up and it's some weird ball of something. Something. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, was it supposed to be a rock or? No, it was a formerly known as a person. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I think it was something that was alive. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) That's even creepier. Yes, it is. So Waverly, of course, is super happy Doc's there. And they're trying to figure out how to get out. Nothing's working because none of these doors are opening. Nope. And suddenly they stumble upon a bit of an underground bunker slash lab. Because there's like, I don't know, it looked almost like a computer monitor, not monitor, but I don't know, like gauges and stuff. Right. But made of stone. And this crazy person who we're assuming is Black Badge. Right. He's got a lab coat on, so you figure that, yeah, this guy must have been a scientist for Black Badge. How the heck did you get in there? Right. And he's been waiting for them to show up. And listen, I just have to tell you how this works. Uh, You pretty much got to learn by doing, because I didn't have a manual or anything. So it's blood ritual. She needs fresh blood. You have to do this. And they're like, no, 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 no. And he's like, yeah, 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 that's how it is. Here. And kind of freaks out because... I freaked out, I should say. Yeah. Because all of a sudden he had a knife. And oh, he had, was like, ah! Or big, it was like a machete. No, it was hedge clippers. Well, he had that too, but at first he hands her something else. Oh, yeah, that's right. And he's like, here. And she's like, what are you doing? No. And then he's like, oh, yeah, no, it's fine. Okay. I don't know how long he's been there, but somebody's cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs at this point. Oh, yeah. Then again, what if it's like, let's do another sci-fi show, Channel Zero, where you don't know how long you've been in the place. Right. (laughs) So maybe it's been 10 minutes. Maybe it's been a thousand years. He doesn't know. Nope. But like I said, Cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, he took those hedge clippers and he's like, okay, you guys are good. And just off. Oh, my gosh. Took off his own head. And I'm like, what? Yeah what (laughs) like i think i said that like four times because i couldn't wrap my head around him i couldn't wrap my head around him not having a head anymore it's like wait a second and everything starts going haywire and doc's like well okay he said fresh blood right uh we might as well use the corpse as they're holding him upside down what the hell is going on (laughs) which i'm finding amusing because they're like this just reminds me of like a Bugs Bunny cartoon or Tom and Jerry when they're like Scooby-Doo. switching the body. Yeah. <laughs> it's like like the old like accordion thing for fireplaces or whatever. Right, That's yeah. what like, I see happening <laughs> as they're trying to get the blood out. And then all of a sudden, Doc Blood Appetite decides to rear its ugly head as he's like holding the guy. I thought he was going to bite the leg and like take some of the blood. And I was like, oh, no. what? Uh, I thought he was saved by Waverly. So I'm really confused. That right. Yeah, it's still a vampire. vampire. Right. And then not just that, like, as they were doing all that with the dude, and he's cracking jokes with it, though. Oh, my God. He's like, oh, more like 61. It's like, And hopefully you're old enough to get what the joke was. But otherwise, right. move on. So... We have our two folks with their heads still intact for now. They don't know what's happening. So they go upstairs. They're back out on the tundra and they're just kind of talking. But again, it was just like a few moments that Doc was ahead of Waverly and suddenly there's a fire. Right. Sitting there and he seems to be getting all weird. Yes. And he's like, oh, sorry about that. But then all of a sudden he knocks out and he's like trying to talk, but he's like slurring his word and i'm like is this place making them forget right because at first it was doing something to them yes yeah because when she was saying it's my birthright and she's like whoa 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 okay this is weird but they fall asleep who knows how long they're knocked out for because when waverly wakes up apparently the bunker's going all crazy again and she goes down there and this time she's gonna feed it with her own blood what yeah how often do you have to do this? And they did mention that that guy had like a ton of cuts on his arm. Right. So this is really not good. But as she's like bleeding a little bit, she's like, come on, you stupid machine. It's angel blood. This is the good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> the pure stuff. So it seems to do the trick because all of a sudden there's a pool of water 
and a lotus flower appears. It's like, okay, what's happening? Because she turns around and what's over there? There's like a, this table or lectern and there's, well, I thought they were books. Yeah, I think they were books too. And with the placard. name, yeah. yeah. The placard that says, choose one, but choose wisely. Right. Which was weird because you had Doc Holiday. Yep. You had Winona Earp. Yep. You had Waverly Gibson. Yes. And then Nicole. Nicole. And I forget her. Oh, hot. <laughs> yeah. So, like, the way she was standing, she was at the end. So I'm assuming she, like, grabbed Winona's book because yeah. of the area she was standing in. Right. But I don't think that's true. I think what we've seen at the end, I'm thinking that that is determining which book she grabbed. Oh, okay. I don't know. This is weird. And I, I only see this getting weirder. Oh, yeah. There's no doubt that it's going to get a whole lot weirder before this season's over with. Yeah. So let's talk about a whole lot of weird. Do you want to do you <laughs> yeah. want to talk about this? Yeah. On route to Monument, Winona gets a flat. And apparently doesn't know how to change it. I'm right there with you. Yep. But her luck turns around when Nicole manages to track her down. <laughs> and? and of course, Winona is just extremely happy to see her. But Nicole decides to give Winona her two cents worth for drugging them and going alone by giving her a knuckle sandwich. <laughs> yeah, that worked out real well for Winona. <laughs> yes, it did. And of course, Nicole fixed the flat and the two head off for Monument and the second entrance to the garden. Now, I love the back and forth between Nicole and Winona because Nicole's taking charge here. She's oh, so funny. enough of Winona running things. It's my turn to run things now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when Nicole's all like, okay, I have a condition. And then she names off a bunch and Winona's like, that's like three and a half condition. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, once they get into Monument, Nicole and Winona find their way inside a warehouse where they immediately start getting shot at. And here Winona has to admit to Nicole that Peacemaker is no more. And so, of course, Nicole says, you be the bait, I'll sneak around the back. Yeah, great. I'm, I'm sure that's going to be perfect for Winona. Right. <laughs> she does manage to avoid getting shot. And Nicole does get around to the shooter. And it ends up being a Valdez, but it's not Gloria. It's Rachel, daughter of Gloria. And this girl is kind of what I expected Winona as a teenager. <laughs> she was a smart ass, <laughs> no BS kind of girl. Yeah, I love it because even when Nicole's like, listen, we need your help. Here, I'll pay you. She's like, really? Yeah. Where am I using cash? So again, I'm thinking, how big of an area has BBD had to evacuate? Right. Well, this whole lab was evacuated by BBD, almost. Yeah, I'm <laughs> saying, well, evacuated-ish. Yeah. So Rachel's willing to help Nicole and Winona find the lab her mom worked in, simply because they also know dolls, which she does as well. And you kind of go, hmm. I wonder if we're going to see dolls appear in this season. This opening really made it feel like we can get him again. Yep, absolutely. And of course, Rachel gives them a tour of the digs, including several don't do's like make noise, step on grates. And we find out that BBD was experimenting with a gas that didn't react according to their hypothesis. Of course not. I really not. feel like she should have expanded that a little bit. Yeah. But being a teenager, she probably doesn't know the complete reasons why. Her mom probably does. Well, she has an idea because when uh, Winona decides to make some noise, that's when she pipes up with, that's why I told you not to say anything. It's like... That's why you tell Winona everything up front. Right, right. <laughs> that there are zombies in here. Right. The noise wakes them up. So, of course, they find a locked room full of furloughed BBD employees or just scientists 
one of the two. I'm sure they weren't furloughed. <laughs> <laughs> well, they are now. Yeah. Zombified by whatever the gas was. And of course, Winona makes some noise and they wake up. Yeah. And it's just not just the noise. ones in the room. It's the whole warehouse full of them because they come from everywhere. And well, when she lights off, what did she call her? Uh, was it a beaver bunker buster or something? Yeah. <laughs> it, it was like a stick of dynamite. Right, yes. Yeah. It's not like she just coughed really loud. No. She made a boom. And kept making a boom. Yeah. <laughs> just casually walking around, tossing them. It's just like, why no, no, what are you doing? I so felt like the Scooby-Doo song was going to happen. Yes. And, and it played <laughs> that way with, with Winona and Nicole and Rachel trying to meet up with each other as they're trying to avoid all the zombies. <laughs> and of course, Winona think she knows where Nicole went and goes into this area, and sure enough, she's standing on a grate. How did you not see that? Yes. And you just seen hands. Like, right. Seconds ago, hands up through the grate. This is what confused me, too. So she just happens to be standing on, like, the bottomless grate? I mean, what happened there? Right. That's really a good question, because that kind of floored me, too, because Nicole comes up, and she notices right away what Winona's standing on. Right. And Winona's telling her, oh, don't you even think about it. But that's not going to stop Nicole as she rushes up, pushes Winona off the grate, and goes down. And you just see her falling and falling and falling and falling. Right. Now, where were all the zombie hands? Was, was Nicole too fast going down to, for them to grab her or what? You know, that, that kind of... That, that was what was weird. But... Yeah, scratching my head as well. With the last scene, <laughs> which we'll talk about in just a second, somebody made a point on Twitter, which I would have not thought of. So go ahead. We'll talk about it. And then I'll talk about what, what I read on Twitter. Right. And the next thing we know, we see Nicole in the bunker, naked as a jaybird. And because Doc woke up and only saw a tree there that wasn't there when he passed out. He goes down there and, sure enough, finds uh, nothing but a smile on Nicole. <laughs> now, this is what was weird. This is what somebody said. First of all, did Waverly grab Nicole's book then? And that's why Nicole is there. And because she chose Nicole, Nicole had to be taken from the, I don't want to say astral plane, like Earth realm. Right. They had to remove her from one spot if she's going to be in the other. But she also seemed almost like her memory was not all there. When yeah, she, she didn't there. really seem aware that she was naked. Right. Because it was just like, oh, hi, Doc. And <laughs> he kind of goes, oh, my. <laughs> so that's what I'm like. That's why I thought she grabbed Nicole's book. But is that why, like, the zombies weren't there and she seemed to fall for, like, a long time? Right. That's very possible. So it's kind of weird. Right. But I mean, then again, hello, did you watch the episode? Uh, yeah. Yeah. That really, you know, when we hear that BBD experimented with gas. All I kept thinking is Resident Evil. Yes. And we see that not only does it seem to affect anybody that's in the bunker, like the scientist, mm -hmm. but it also seemed to affect both Doc and Waverly as well, oh. because... Waverly makes that statement about the throne that that's her birthright. Right. And you kind of go, that's not way, you know, Waverly wouldn't do that. Right. Not knowing exactly where she is. She would say, well, let me figure out where I am first and what's going on. Then if I don't see a way out, then yes, I'm where I'm supposed to be. So, yeah, I think this seems to be, at first I thought it was an, an interdimensional type thing that was zapping people from here to there but now i'm not a hundred percent sure of that it still may be a portal to go from one place to another still in the earth realm and that may be why it was in the ghost river triangle and it popped him into monument maybe it's an alien transporter <laughs> but at the same time we've got something going on with the bunker that needs blood that can't be good no it can't so there's so much weirdness happening. And like I said, 
If you didn't expect weirdness after waiting two years for this bad boy to come back, I don't know where you were. Right. And <laughs> remember, season three, vampires, a whole busload of them, party time. <laughs> yeah. We were all scratching our heads after that episode going, what the hell is going on? <laughs> like At this point, I'm totally expecting aliens. But oh, yeah. then again, it's 2020. I'm expecting aliens any- anyway. <laughs> yeah. It'll come rolling up. So. Yeah. Well, if you're a little confused, just like we are, you're not alone because we've received some feedback from a fellow herper who also is a little bit confused. So let's take a listen to some feedback we received from our friend Fred from the Netherlands. Hello, Steve and John and all listeners to the Fan Girl Zone. This is Fred from the Netherlands with some feedback for Winona Earp Season 4, Episode 1. Good that this series is back and very nice to see these characters again. And especially for you, Steve and I, who went to Earpapalooza last year, where we had a lot of fun with some of these actors. Which would all not be possible in this time of age, sadly. It had the mystery of most beginning episodes of a season with a lot of unclarity, such as the whole thing here with the Garden of Eden, with this concrete structure and the guy that is cutting off his head here, all still quite unclear. Unclear how Kate and Nicole landed up in the train and the whole zombie stuff, etc, etc. I have the impression that's the general structure of a Winona Earp season. In the beginning a lot of loose threads and mysteries and if you go along the season it becomes more and more clear and the storylines become more clear. There were a lot of typical Winona Earp jokes in it and I think actually a little bit too much. It's a bit overdone. Here and there, typical Winona herb joke is okay, but if there is one in every three to five minutes, I find it a little bit too much. And sometimes there is even something hidden in every second line. With all respect for Emily Andrus, a little bit overwritten. Unless you would see this as a comedy. In a comedy you expect every five minutes a, a big joke or even more. But I don't want to categorize Winona Earp into the category degree of comedies. Okay, that was all for now. Greetings, till the next time, Fred from the Netherlands. Fred, we're all confused. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. Garden of Eden, yeah, like I said, the Yelp reviews were wrong. Yep. <laughs> but yes, it is really good to hear your voice again, by the way. I kind of skipped that, sorry. Yes, and, absolutely. Uh, at the top of the program, you heard when Herpapalooza will be coming back, so maybe you'll, you'll be back in the area. That's not too terribly far from the Chicagoland area. Right. So you guys can come up and see my decoration. But anyway, (laughs) let's go back to Fred's feedback. Yeah. Interesting that you kind of thought it was a little too many jokes, but a two-year hiatus for Wyonona Herb, I can't blame Emily for writing in that many jokes because I think the Herpdom needed not only the weirdness, but the laughter as well. Yeah, I have to agree with that. Plus, I think all the jokes were also showing how stressed Winona was with everything. And that made a difference because like she didn't know what was happening with anybody. And obviously, neither did we. Right. So I think that was part of the point. Oh, yeah. Winona's, that, that's Winona's personality is she makes a joke about things that she can't explain. Yes, or, especially you know, when it's she's her stress out. relief, right? And yeah, she had plenty of them, and I mean, everybody had at least one or two good, really good lines, right? You know, that's not I mean, how lesbianism not- works, and <laughs> <laughs> I mean, some of it I thought was really necessary, and then you had a little heartfelt moments in there, you know, like Nedley talking about his daughter. That right. he had to figure stuff out with her. Yep. So it's like, okay, you know what? I, I think we're getting a little bit of everything. But yeah, there was a lot of one-liners in this one. Yes. And Nicole admitting that Winona was her best friend. I mean. <laughs> that surprised me. Yes, that was a shocker. Yeah, it even turned Winona's head. <laughs> right. So, I, um, yeah, basically, Fred, you said it. Just go along with the season and see where we end up. Yeah. Emily doesn't ever give us something that we can figure out in the first episode. That No. 
and I wouldn't want it any other way. I want to be guessing and trying to figure out what's going on. That's what makes part of this Winona Earp series so special is you got somebody that is just awesome at mind games. Yes. <laughs> so Because, you know, I, during the panel, they mentioned that it was going to have a lot to do with family and that the big baddie might even be part of the family. And you kind of go, what? What? Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> so I guess we'll find out. I mean, I'm excited to see where we're going. Oh, yeah. I've waited this long. I'm, yes. I'm, I'm going to savor this one. <laughs> yes. So thank you, Fred, for your feedback as always. Thanks, Fred. And if anybody else wants to send us some feedback, we, of course, enjoy hearing it, whether it's via email or audio like Fred's doing. You can tweet along with us as well. But you send us your thoughts at sci-fi talk at fangirlzone.com. And while you're at it, rate and review us on iTunes and every other platform you find us on because good ratings and reviews help other fans of the show find us. Tell your friends about the show. They can binge watch three seasons and catch up with you. And of course, we hope you're enjoying the podcast. You can head on over to www.fangirlzone.com and check out our contacts page and all the ways to contact us that way as well. And tweet along with Steve and I when the show's on because, oh my gosh, some of the theories you guys come up with, I would have never thought of. Like that one with Nicole. Right. I wouldn't have thought of that. So you guys are awesome. We're so glad we're back. Yes. Yes, Erpers are back. And Tim's giant mustache, <laughs> it gets bigger every every season. He's just going to yep. be a giant mustache next season. Yeah. So for this episode of Sci-Fi Talk, I am Sean Fangirl S. And I'm Steve. I feel like I've been standing here for two years. And until next time. <laughs>